Hello to another episode of Lean Business Agility. Today from the Enterprise Camp and Coach here in Cologne. And with me is Thomas van der Boer. Hi, Thomas. Hi. <laughs> You are on an agile journey uh, in medical device development. So um, before we start, who are you? Yes, I'm Thomas. Um, I'm uh, not uh, maybe not not that what you would expect in an agile environment. So I'm, I'm, I have a, a pure technical background basically. Um, we are working, or I'm working in a in a pharmaceutical company um, uh, where we develop medical devices. Um, so like insulin pens or uh, auto injectors uh, that you need to to use for treatment. Um, or to, to inject a drug. Okay. And yeah, what we do is we develop uh, the methods that you have to to uh, to apply to those devices in order to check if they have the right quality, in order to, uh, to check that they are developed as they have to be. Okay, nice. So we are not in software development today. Yes, absolutely. Not. <laughs> it has nothing to do with software. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but nevertheless, uh, you are on some kind of agile journey, right? Yes. So. Um, why are you on this agile journey? How did it start? I think everything started um, when we when we we, we, we try to find something um, to do better planning. So so everything started with a big plan that was maybe more or right. less crushed um, because everything changed so so rapidly and so frequently. So everything started with finding things that are, are much better to 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 plan. I, I call it lean planning. So plan the things when you need them, hmm. and then we found kind of a, a strange method for our view that was Scrum, and we saw we, we saw that there are a lot of po po potential issues addressed that we have when we tried it, and then we, we it was it was the start. Maybe it wasn't the best start, but it was a start, and then we, we found a, a lot of more things like like Kanban, like uh, like yeah, like like portfolio management hmm. and all that and this is what we introduced during the last four years now for for agile development of methods yes okay nice so uh when you say scrum campaign and so in in what kind of environment is this so is this one team or is this multiple teams or yeah so it's multiple teams um we have uh, four teams that that um have different portfolios um so they are I would I would call them they are expert in a certain kind of de drug delivery device, mm. um, but what we try to do is to have them also T-shaped. So like, um, yeah, like w when you have a, a, a team that is T-shaped out of experts that can help each other, we want to have an organization that that does the same, in order to have the right priorities at the right time on the right product. Mm, okay, so what I remember you started on a team level uh, with Scrum. Yes. Right. But then we somehow met at, uh, I think, was it the Enterprise Kanban Coach? Or? I, th I think the first time we met in the Ed Enterprise Kanban Coach, okay. yes. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, you were like, okay, um, the teams are doing Scrum, but that's yes. not enough. So what was the missing part? Yeah, so, so um, as I mentioned, um, when, when it comes to a point where we want to go into the verification of a device, it's very time critical and it's very quality critical and we want to have the right expert at the right time with the right pro product. So that means we have to somehow um, arrange and plan the, the, the upstream. Mm. So somehow, how, how do we plan with the teams and what they are going to do? How do we have the right capacity at the right time? So this, this portfolio thinking of when do we do what, yeah. this is something that, that we, we saw not addressed in the Scrum framework as we introduced it. So we, we thought about different possibilities to do that and I think Kanban and the flight level models in Kanban is very helpful in that, yes. Mm, okay. So this is wh how I came to the enter enterprise Kanban coaching. Okay, yeah. cool. Scrum alone was not enough for you. This is why you basically went to the upstream and you made sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time, so coordination. But how does this look like in, in real life? Yeah, so, so um, what, we, what we installed was a big portfolio board. Um, mm. So where we have, we run all the initiatives, made the internal um, sorry, investments uh, like, like uh, uh, quality measures or whatever, uh, but also the pro product work. Mm. Um, and we, we start with the big packages, what we call initiatives or Zagas. Okay, so, so, th so that's what we see now on the left side, yes, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, and then we break them down in a, in, a, in, a, in a distance where we think this is now capable to, to break them down in more detail. Um, so this is where the the uh, the, the the saga is break down in, in, in an epic. Mm -hmm. So epic is kind of uh, one big 
work package um, compilation. So that brings value to the product. Mm. Okay, and um, then we break it in the in the very last moment. We break it down as a commitment point to the teams mm -hmm. um, into work packages um, that the the teams are going to refine and, and rethink of how we, we are going to achieve this epic and then process it through the via the thrum process. Mm -hmm. Okay, that sounds very cool. And uh, here in the picture on the right side, we see active learning. So what does this mean? Yeah, so, so um, basically we want to learn on all levels. So like um, in the teams, normally you learn on the work package area, but also in the portfolio level, we want to learn on the epics and we'll learn, learn on the saga so that we learn on an epic what we have to do for the next epic. Mm -hmm. So what we have uh, decided is that we we summarize or co co collect all these this work packages and all the, the sagas and, and, and yeah. everything and perform when we have completed them kind of a learning curve um so to have f fast feedback in in the in the development okay cool yes and i think uh, one one important point what you also see in this in this chart is that um when we introduced the, the portfolio planning and we did that um, in a kind of uh, that our product owners are able to do good planning. Mm. Okay, so we optimize. The, so what is the process? We we plan for teams. So we're optimizing the plans for teams. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> um, and then we learned that this is th this leads to to utilized teams. So it, it was more or less what which team can have more capacity, whatever. Yeah. And this is not the, the the key question. The key question is how can we can we be fast in product delivery? Yeah. So then we we rearranged everything, like seeing the products and the product flow, um, by by losing kind of, of the, the, the team's flow, but now we can manage all the blockers on the product line instead of, nice. of concentrating on the teams and making teams busy, yeah. we concentrate on the flow um, and make product fast. Okay, so if you optimize for busy people, <laughs> you, you get, get busy, busy people. <laughs> <laughs> okay, nice. That sounds really like a very nice journey, interesting <laughs> journey, cool. So um, you basically made sure that the right team is working on the right stuff at the right time. Mm -hmm. Agile interactions is one of these keywords which we, we are using here. So that sounds nice. Mm -hmm. However, um, can you somehow quantify that there's some, some kind of benefit what you're doing here? Yeah. So, so when we started our journey, it was about, about a year that we had to, 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 to plan for verification. Um, however, when we, when we do now our approach and having all hands on deck that we need, um, it was about several weeks, um, not two months, that we run the same project. Um, that is about two years ago. Mm. Um, I would say um, today we are capable in running multiple projects in the same time. So that means we have a tremendous speed. Um, and the cool thing is that, that we, 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 we do it by not delaying any other project. So it's not like, okay, just delay everything and we, yeah. we do that. It is like we do that and that at okay. the same time. Yeah. Wow, that sounds great. Yes. So. Uh, if you quantify it, what, what is the improvement somehow from? It's I would say about eighty percent. Eighty percent faster. Yes. So lead time dropped by eighty percent. Yes. That's not too bad. <laughs> That's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very nice. Cool. <laughs> so the the when you when you imagine what the eighty percent means is like um, we are able to 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 achieve um, to the market so bring the product to the market and to the patients who who need it um, in their treatment. Um, in about one year earlier, earlier or whatever, whatever. So, so that means the time to market has dramatically increased what is very, very important in our, our business. Mm. And if we would quantify cost of delay, we don't do it here, but <laughs> what I know from your business, these yes. are usually very huge numbers. Yes, so. absolute. Absolute. <laughs> wow. absolute. I'm interested about one more thing. So when we talk about, you made sure that the right teams work on the right stuff at the right time. So mm -hmm. this flight level two system, right? Mm -hmm. Um, it, it often looks like that there's some kind of manager who is somehow controlling the teams and yeah, like command and control, I tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. But that's totally not the case, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that that's the old world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, would, I wouldn't say not, totally not, um, but of, of course there are kind of boundaries or things that we try to do. Um, but it's for me it's important um, to, to understand that lean development is kind of don't invent the wheel several times. So when you want to have a speed in innovation, you have to make sure that one idea is invented one time mm. and everybody can, can, can have benefit out of it. So it's about networks, it's about getting the people, the right people at the right place at the right, uh, to, the right in, uh, uh, to the right question and then answer 
answer the question and learn over the whole organization. So this is this is what what real portfolio or agile portfolio management have to do. Like how can you you have all your brains together yeah. in order to achieve your goals? And I think this is the key about yeah. it. It's not one one steering the, the system, it's the steer, system steering itself. Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, I think that's one thing we need to somehow, let's probably demystify when it comes to the flight levels, yes. because it's, it, it, it looks a little bit like a hierarchical model, but it's totally not. So uh, let, me, let me put it that way. The, the, the hierarchy of the organization and the flight levels, that's two different parts, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 and I think this is mainly one of, of, the, of the main um, uh, learnings that we have is like, like how can we, can we do this in the hierarchy? How can we do this in, in reducing all those bureaucracy, uh, the, all the boundaries that we have, all the things that we have because we have organizations? Mm. And I think this is the hard part of it. That continues also by, uh, in our organization, of yeah. course. Cool. Thomas, that's really impressive. I really need to say this. Yeah, very great. So uh, you are on this journey now for four to five, five years, years yeah. five years, yeah. Um, so you made already really a lot of learnings and mm -hmm. you did some great stuff. So here are viewers. What would you recommend them? Yeah, I would say, first of all, be brave. <laughs> Just try <laughs> um, and don't don't make it too big. So so when when when, when you think about our journey it was like waves it was like iterations it was like it was not the portfolio itself it was not there no. um, but it came at a point I think one main thing that we have uh, found is that um, as we started um, uh, running through the flight level um, uh, approach and started um, reducing the initiatives instead of reducing or, or uh, limiting the whip oh. at the team level, um, there we had the, the, the biggest impact. So whenever you, you can, <laughs> don't try to optimize the teams. Oh. Try to find a way how, f how flow creates through your through your um, uh, your department or whatever your organization, and try to have the impact on the highest flight level as possible um, to make to make the biggest the, the biggest uh, uh, through. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that sounds really cool. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Thomas. It's a pressure. And <laughs> we need to prepare now. It's it's the morning of day two of the Enterprise Company Coach. And it's the it's the final segment. Yeah. So it's almost done. It's <laughs> almost <laughs> over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And cheers.